What's going on, world? Hey, everybody. This is your guy, TJ. And this is Danny. And, and this is another episode of... Lover's Quarrel. Yeah. It's episode number 20. 20. This is a, it's a milestone, milestone right? Us. Okay. It's like a milestone, like, twice over. Sure. Because the last time we stopped at, like, episode 7. Oh, yeah. Oh, when we did the podcast before? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this is, like, really good. We're, we're, we're making progress here. Um, And today we have... A very special guest. Very, very special. So very special. So today we have Michelle Hope. Whoop whoop. Thank you so much. (laughs) Hi guys. (laughs) Um and we'll do our formal, formal, proper introduction befitting Miss Hope um a little later on in the episode. But uh TJ and I just kinda wanted to address episode nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't our best. It wasn't. Because yeah. We didn't like each other when we recorded the episode. She was tired. Yeah, I was like talking in circles. That's why it's literally the episode was called Going in Circles because I didn't like towards the end I was just like rambling and you know what? That's life because yeah. We are a very busy people and, and we I'm, go through things and you know. Yeah, we got to be, be, be honest. So, you know, if it sounded weird to y'all, it, it sounded, sounded weird, weird as hell to us. So, <laughs> we didn't, so we're going to put that one in the vault. That's yeah, going to be. So, with this episode, we come correct. You got it. What? No, I'm just saying, with this episode, it's special. It is, have it really Hope, is. That's one thing. And this one is going to be recorded. Yes. So this is going to be the first time we've had a video. So I'm that's really, doing our thing. really special. You are very wow. special. I am glad I didn't get dressed. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. You, you look, look great. cute. I, I said, it's so nice here today. So I had to get outside. Yes, yeah. sun's out, gun's out. Got it. Get it, girl. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um, so let's just start off with, so also another little amendment to, yeah. uh, what, uh, our episode. So TJ and I were talking and we were saying that, you know, when we do our event of the week, sometimes we literally don't have anything to vent about. And venting kind of has a negative connotation to it. Yeah. So we wanted and, to kind of switch it up. We wanted to do something a little different. So, so we're going to change the name of it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So instead of it being the event of the week, this part of our show is now going to be known as Elevator Talk. And the reason why it's going to be called Elevator Talk is because it's literally either going to be some ups or some downs. Yeah. So we said that, you know, because depending on the week, depending on our mood, we may have a whole bunch of shit that we want to like, you know, somebody needs to just we're putting down or throwing down or if we want to lift somebody up or we feeling good then it's going to be an up kind of talk what could be up and down you know a like the bit bad kid the bad kid who press all the buttons that would be you no that's crazy you to me definitely with a child you're, you're, you're erroneous oh, she's gonna throw out four dollar words and then just hope to, which is <laughs> yeah, a okay you're such a hater whatever so on this elevator talk that sounds so weird i gotta get used to it yeah you do um i'm gonna go i'm going down I'm, I'm, me too. All right, cool. <laughs> so, I want to talk about Taylor Swift's remake to uh, September. Have you heard that? It's bad. Don't, don't waste your time. Yes. Yeah, so. I don't listen to Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like Mariah Carey said, who is that? Yeah. yeah. So, she, so she remade Earth, Wind & Fire's Dancing September. in September. And it's like yeah. a country version, very bland with banjos and. Salt on a cracker dry. Yeah. It's, I'm not a Taylor, who is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It so, was, and you know, like you know, like the the, the range that like Earth Wind and Fire, like the vocal. That song goes. Like, Who cares? Let them get their money. Cha ching. Yeah. Yeah. That's a positive. That's a like silver linings. That's an up on that. So, so we're gonna get. That's gonna be a cash cow. Yeah, it, but it was it's just terrible. such a bad. Song. She's kind of been getting like like reamed in the like every article I've seen about it was all like yeah. So she did this. It's yeah. not that good. It just reminded me of like the old days, like. When black artists couldn't put out music, but the white artists would, mm-hmm. and then it'll be like profitable. Like, Elvis, I'm not. You better get it. your coin. No, <laughs> definitely, Earth, but fire. <laughs> keep that hair laid. <laughs> this is true. They have they go through a lot of relaxer. So what's your uh, damn moment? Okay, so we obviously like you know we're recorded in New York, but we come, we live in Baltimore, and so I I did the drive up, and this my and I can't believe he didn't notice it, but. It really irritates me that, like, on the Jersey Turnpike, coming up here, there are minimum four to five ads for, like, these right-to-life, anti-abortion, you know, like, a baby's heartbeat is 
at 18 days old and all, and I'm just like you're and I'm like I'm, it's so actually, aggressive happy. it's so aggressive and I'm like y'all are trying to like guilt trip pe- guilt trip people who are trying to get like right. down the eastern seaboard and right. I am and I'm just looking at it I'm and, you know and I'm like I I'm pro choice and I have a child so like I'm fully aware of like what all the physical aspect of like being mm-hmm. pregnant is but it's just like why are you like assaulting me with like this Probably down not. yeah like why are you like coming at me from all sides and like and I, so I'm saying I mentioned it to TJ on the way he was like I've never seen anything I'm like are you kidding me like they're like it's like bam bam, bam. you know it's it's like one of those and then it's like uh the, the the billboard with like the America's most wanted and then it's like uh something for healthcare. And I'm like, but why is it so aggressive all up and down the Jersey Turnpike? I have a question for Chris Christie. I don't know who sanctions these, but it's just a lot. Like one, okay, get yeah, I get it, but like why is it that there's five of them? And so it was just like on my my spirit when you we were driving up here because you know everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I'd be damned if you have to like have it you know, on a 90 foot billboard. So that's my little bit of elevated talk. Um, Michelle, we always open this part of the segment to whoever our guest may be. Is there anything that is up or down on you? You know, I'm feeling very good today um, because uh, I like to give back to the community and Mm -hmm. I get opportunities to engage with the community often. And this morning, I call it Soup Kitchen Saturdays. Nice. (laughs) So um, I work and I give out uh, free produce Mm -hmm. um, to people in a housing complex here in New York. And they are awesome. And I love them. Yes. And I got my first gift of the season, which was... Drum roll. This is the best part. It is. Um, it was actually a take-home care package from New York Presbyterian Hospital. Okay. Because it's a lot of elderly people. Mm-hmm. And there's this one, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> anyway, Miss Dorothy, if I'm not there, when I return, she hits me. But when I'm <laughs> there, she always tells me how she gets in fights with her doctors. So obviously she's older. Last year she told me she was 65. Today she told me she was 75. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure she's somewhere between 75 and like 85. Oh. I don't I don't necessarily know if she really knows how old she is. Mm-hmm. Um, cause she's a spitfire. Mm, maybe and that's then, how old she feels. Right. But, <laughs> and, and I see all my other lovely ladies and gentlemen and I am the check-in girl. When I was younger, I used to work nightclubs. Mm-hmm. I just upgraded to the food baskets <laughs> now. <laughs> um, so I feel great. Um, it's sunny here today. It is a nice day. Finally. Yeah. So I'm just, and I'm grateful you guys invited me. So We're, thank you so much. We're so glad you super did. excited to have you here and we thank you so much. All right, so now, this is also kind of going to be an alley-oop to Michelle because this is the relationship tip of the week. Mm -hmm. And typically, this is where, you know, I come through with some type of hopeful hopefully pearl of wisdom gem. Because only you come up with it. Huh? Because only you come up with it. I mean, yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. No. (laughs) Well, I always speak on it, I should say. That's crazy to me. But we wanted to to throw the alley-oop to Michelle. And so, you know... And relationships, well, even though we're this old married couple, we don't just like leave. We don't always like relegate it to just mm-hmm. marriage or even long term relationships. Sometimes it's you know friendships. Sometimes it's just you know mm-hmm. family relate, you know familiar mm-hmm. relationships. So, um, with that being said, though, we wanted to offer you the opportunity to give us some wise words from Michelle Hope. Okay. You know, I think for me um, today, I mean, I could give you the tip of like always talk to each other mm-hmm. or like kiss each other at night but I don't want to do that I think Mm -hmm. I want to do something a little different so there's a really great book called The New People Making Mm -hmm. and it kind of talks about um, family dynamics and relationships and I studied marriage family therapy in grad school um, to start and one of the things I found so fascinating about this book and how kind of relationship dynamics play out in families is that oftentimes, and I feel like since I just met your daughter, this is kind of timely. <laughs> oftentimes, you have to remember that um, before they were a mom and a dad, they were a son and a daughter, mm-hmm. and their parents are someone's brothers and sisters, and all these different hats you wear in your life, mm-hmm. and really honoring each one of those hats and honoring, I think, 
um, each part of who you are because you're a dad now mm-hmm. and you're a mom now, but you're also a son because we just got to meet your father too, which is mm-hmm. awesome. And like uh, understanding that all of those different hats are different hats Mm -hmm. and they look different Mm -hmm. and they feel different and just I think tapping into your relationship with self and all those different hats and kind of checking in with you can help improve all of your relationships because all of those different hats they're not just one thing or one person they're involving so many other people Mm -hmm. Um, and if we could just take some time to kind of sit in that Mm -hmm. um, I think it can just kind of raise all of your relationships Mm. Um, and being kind again to yourself and kind of filling yourself back up Um, and and not just filling yourself back up as a whole but even in those individual hats Mm. right fill yourself I think think that's my tip of the week I think that was an awesome tip of the week I think it's also very timely for some of the things questions that we have for you or and and um, because you know, we obviously want to get to know you. We want to give you your pl- platform. But then also, too, like, we wanted to ask you questions as, like, you said, like, you did marriage and family, you know, counseling as your mm-hmm. as your um, concentration. But then also you have yours as your sex expert. Sex right. expert. So you have all these kind of hats that you wear and mm-hmm. your passion and your purpose. And so... and. So we also have questions for you Great. from even just like our like marital standpoint. And I have questions for you. Oh, that I, I hope we have that answers. <laughs> yeah. I'm always got an answer. Oh my god! See this guy? Like you know, I, I keep him around for you know tax purposes. Right. Mm. But that's crazy. <laughs> How you gonna steal my line? Because I'm I got it like that. No, that's terrible. She's find learning. Your own. Exactly. She right. Has, I learned from own. the master. Right. Okay. Okay. You know our Wi-Fi password is TJ is my master for. That's what he made our gra- like guest password at our house. I like that. It, you do? I don't. I think it's, it's funny. It's, yeah. You know what? If I'm you glad want, you have somebody if, on your side. If you want to, if you want the Wi-Fi, then <laughs> you gotta say TJ is my master. <laughs> I'm nice. done with you. Um, I'm. I do a lot of talking, so I'm gonna let you no, no, no. roll out the intro, baby. So go ahead and introduce our. So we have guest Michelle Hope. Hi. The sex expert, the author, hardworking woman. Thank you. Yeah, like the woman with many hats. Yes. So, um, hold on. Let me just hold the book up. Oh, that's. Oh so yeah, being that we have video, right? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I wrote that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Believe. Yes. So. Yeah. So I got a lot of jokes. A lot. Of, a lot of my friends is like, why? Why are you reading the girl's guide? It's like on our for sex table. education. And he was, I'm like, but do they sh- pick it up? Yeah. They might learn something. Yeah. They might. You're right. Or maybe they have a little girl or they no, work they with... Okay. They don't have any children. Well, but there's that. They have sisters. They have aunties. They have cousins. I mean, you never know. You know how... I hope they learn something. You know I, I, feel are. Like, I feel like the, the next one I think I want to do is adults. Okay. Um, like a man's guide to sex education. Yeah. Mm. I'm certain that there's stuff that, that's in here that they definitely didn't know because some of the, the myths, myths, words that exist around like the female body are, are and they're, they're lots of them put it like that like right. they're not in short supply well now that i have a daughter you know i think it's it, it's helpful like i read it before but it, it i can put it into context a little bit more like it's, it's a little bit different of an understanding because it's like She's a this girl. Is, and she's going to um, go through this. Yeah. yeah. She's gonna, this, is, so, this is all happening so at some point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I can kind of have that conversation. We don't need Revisit mommy. it. You can revisit it as, you know, she grows up yeah, yeah, and yeah. as she gets older. Just to remind yourself about what's coming. No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So how was the experience with writing this? It's a blur. Okay. Um, I was really busy at the time that mm-hmm. I wrote it. So, I don't remember much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was working probably 50 hours a week. Wow. On top of, and I did it in like seven weeks. Okay. Mm. So, that's a very unrealistic timeline. Um, but that also made it so I couldn't nitpick over things. Mm-hmm. I had to just kind of hit deadlines. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, I couldn't do it without the help of friends. I had a couple girls that um, helped me kind of transcribe um, and and dictate like it took dictation for me um, because a lot of people don't know this I'm dyslexic Mm -hmm. Um, so for me to write a book when I was in high school I couldn't read Uh, I was like reading at a second grade level in high school 
So for me, it was emotional mm -hmm. to some extent. It was frightening. Um, I was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was like, it's, well, and it's over now. So yes. um, I, if you have kids, if you know kids, pick it up. Uh, I really want to do another one again, like mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. um, at different stages of life. Like what sex is when you're single in your 20s is much different than mm -hmm. when your parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not just, oh, I need to have sex or, oh, I, it's the idea like, do I want to have sex? Am I mm -hmm. in that headspace? And like, mm -hmm. I think that the things I've learned in my work and working with people um, have given me a lot of insight and I'd love to be able to share that with large audiences mm -hmm. got it so but it was it was hell in full disclosure it was hell okay yeah I, i've heard and and i have very 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 close friends like one of my best friends is a is a writer by like trade, trade. Mm -hmm. and she has published work and then she also has something <laughs> she's working on now and it's like such a you know so like that seven weeks is like like a, you're right that's the blur because she like literally has to like go to it she writes fiction but then it's like coming back to it and then you know finding the motivation finding the words find you know because i'm i'm sure there are definitely were moments where like you sometimes you feel like you're staring at a screen and like nothing is coming and even if you're talking about something that's you know fact-based it's still like how do you want to convey that information and, and how do you convey that you know the book was designed for younger teens mm -hmm. and then i'm like so let's talk about trans let's mm -hmm. talk about this very progressive mm -hmm. um of a of like somebody that teaches i teach adults i work with adults so i want to mm -hmm. just give all these young people all this information but i'm like girl bye mm -hmm. you got yeah. to get this out in 250 words yeah you know and like kids don't have the attention span and they, they sure can't don't. understand a lot of concepts and i just needed it to be kind of to the point and but it was girl i'm mm -hmm. i'm glad i did it Thank you to people who have picked it up. Go pick it up on Amazon. It's also available on Kindle. Yeah. I'm not the best promoter of my things, which is weird. I don't know why. Well, we'll be sure to have the, the link on, on the on the bio so that way right. people know. They can get it there. You know. And then I right. mean and it's such a necessary thing because like we talked before, like I teach middle school. Mm -hmm. So this is like I teach your target audience mm -hmm. and there is so much that they don't know. And I almost would say that like if not saying telling you what to do, but like a boy's guide yeah. to sex educate because yeah. they think they know so they much know. and they don't know anything. Don't know. And I'm like, they, I mean, and in middle school, like farts and sex is like the topics of discussion <laughs> always. And so it, you know, more than even more so than my girls, like as far as like girls need to understand like their bodies because there's so much happening and there's so much happening with boys' bodies too. But they, the, what I see sometimes, at least, is like the conversation isn't so geared to sex among my my girls. At least, not, not to the level that my boys are. Like everything's about like um, who's having sex, who's getting it. Yeah. Who's it. It's porn. Yeah, it's porn, and and you have to understand. Like they they say that they believe like first exposure to porn is about eight or nine years old. Wow. Um, and everybody's got a smartphone, so it's really easy it's to easy. access easy, porn. Yeah. We and had to work hard to see porn exactly. when we were growing up. Like to you my, had to fight for it. I just threw my brothers. <laughs> what, he had the VHS tapes. Oh, I had to like try to sneak it. Like I hope the first one I saw was at my friend's house. I must be older than you because uh, I remember it was look at the Playboy. Uh, or you had to actually read to yeah. see porn. Like mm -hmm. it was like, why am I reading? I don't know all these words. So my babysitter, the penis. they used to have like adult magazines in the yep. bathroom. Yep. So you know, used to want like go in the bathroom to see it. But and then you stay in the older. bathroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how it goes. But yeah, you're right. It's it's so much easier. It's so much like at your fingertips. Yep. And so many people, so many parents are giving their kids these smart um, smartphones, smartphones and tablets just to placate them. Like yeah, but it's not just phones. So mm -hmm. let's you know, let's not. It's the billboards we drive by. Mm -hmm. We're we're bombarding young people with images of like sexual sexuality sex 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 um we sexualize so many things um and i'm gonna say this don't be mad because i know we're coming to the mm -hmm. summer but i want you to consider this because you have a little girl what's the point in putting a bikini on a little girl mm -hmm. like when we think about what bikinis are mm -hmm. they're made to make women 
be somebody might be like, oh, it's for a tan. You ain't getting no tan on no little baby, mm-hmm. but they look cute. And we're like, oh, she's so cute. Yeah. But, but when somebody... we really like peel back the layers of that, mm-hmm. why are, and then, and now they have them where they like, they sparkly and they have little skirts on them. Yeah. And it seems like I don't have a child, you know, but I'd be like, you got a, a waterproof pamper on. Okay. You finna get in a hoo, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't see mm-hmm. the point. Maybe that makes me a hippie, but you know, they, the, yeah. there's no breast buds. There's. You know, it Mm. just, um, we hypersexualize things. Like, even on the internet, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody puts a picture of a baby in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, we're taking this down for nude or lewd content. Oh, we have to protect them against pedophiles. Mm -hmm. And I get all of that. But that in itself seems like we are consuming so much sex and sexuality without context. Mm -hmm. And context is so important Mm -hmm. because... Boobs are the human body and, yeah. you know, like... They serve a so, purpose at, at some point in your life. A meal for someone. Yeah. Like, and it just... I have to catch myself in other things. Like, I was watching um, something about breastfeeding and a woman was breastfeeding her daughter until eight. Yeah. And that's how I felt. I was like, that's a fetish waiting to... But then my friend who is a... Very wise woman. And mother was like, but Michelle, now you're sexualizing that. And Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I am. Mm -hmm. And I had to check myself. So I have to check myself, even in this profession, even, Mm -hmm. you know, really studying human development and all of this. We're just bombarded with sex. So books like these put things into context, into perspective. And I hope that it's a good tool for parents to be able to start conversations. Yeah. And I think... I think it will because it's much needed because the level of misinformation out there is kind of like staggering and they need all the help they can get, especially Definitely. girls and guys of this age range because that's just everything. It's there's I actually like so like I'm taking like a class right now in, in, in grad school and like it's we're on the child development like yeah. portion of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like reading about it and it's 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 hard sometimes to think about it when we get to being adults about like how much your cognitive and your physical development is like moving at warp speed in like the first like 14 years of your life yeah and and it's like i I, you try to remember because it's like it's almost like it's like a it's a a blurry history when you think back on your own for some people but it's it's so happen it's coming so fast and so furious that these changes and these like Mm -hmm. needs and these and you can't reconcile them right and so that, that having that you know, having things like this as a as a guide mm-hmm. is what is necessary because that's how other people end up, you know, way off the beaten path. Right. And I think having the conversation, I think that's the biggest thing. Sometimes, you know, parents would be like, they're too young to have that conversation. Yep. Mm-hmm. But if they're exposed to that, to, to those things, you should have that conversation so that way they know what to look out for, you know, yeah. so. And how to digest the world around them mm-hmm. with the Me Too movement, Time's Up, mm-hmm. Stormy Daniels, a president who says grab them by the pussies. It's like sex is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And to kind of speak to the idea of brain development, right? Mm-hmm. So when a child is born, you see the most amount of brain development between zero and like four years old. Mm-hmm. And then the second time that you will see the most amount of brain development is during puberty. Mm-hmm. So that's why the middle schoolers that you're dealing with, it is it is warp speed for them in that time because mm-hmm. the, um, you know, what's happening is the body is starting to become an adult. So the chemicals in the brain are flooding. That pituitary gland starts pumping mm-hmm. hormones And then once those hormones, whether it's testosterone or estrogen or, you know, once those things start happening, it's like there's sleep. They they become sleep deprived because their circadian rhythm is thrown off Mm -hmm. and they want to stay up later and sleep all day, sleep all day. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been some studies to suggest that they should push school back uh, a few hours to kind of help with that. Um, They're trying to manage Uh, removing themselves from the connection to their parents and start to kind of step out on their own ideals. And that can be a scary place. Mm -hmm. And if they're, if we as parents and and educators and stakeholders aren't there to kind of give them that fertile soil, there's a lot that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And we see that it does often, but you know, and then they they seek so much of their validation and their information from each other that they want to like 
fall into it with their tribe like it's just like well I, they don't they don't know what they don't even know so they just like seek answers from each other and, and it's just, the worst answers ever they're all wrong they're, they're all, all wrong. wrong but they're that's all... why parents should try to start talking about sex and sexuality um prior to 13 because once they hit about 13 14 then they are really shifting into listening to their peers but before that uh they will take your advice so mm -hmm. that's the time to like yeah. At 9, 10, when puberty starts to, like, set in, that's the best time to start the conversation. And well, all the time, actually. And you're, I, I totally agree because I feel like I was one of my, like, I was one of those few kids who, like, when I, like, started my period, I knew what it was. Like, I wasn't surprised. I didn't think I was dying. I didn't, mm -hmm. like, I hear all those stories where people be like, oh, my God, I thought I was, like, I'd, I'd fallen, you know, I fell on my bike and I thought, like, oh, my God. And I'm like... No, like what? Like how did you even think that this was anything but crazy. your period starting? And I, like I have friends who like had literally no clue what was happening, and I'm like, w like what conversations did your mother have? And she was like, they didn't. Right. And I'm like, I and and, I'm, and I, it's so hard for me to wrap my head around that because I, you know, I have a mother, I have an older sister, so tampons and pads were like always in full supply in my, you know, linen closet, and before I even had, you know, it was my turn. So, but then when that time came, I knew what it was. I knew what to do. I knew mm -hmm. like what, what things that I'd be, you know, experiencing. And so it wasn't as traumatic as mm -hmm. it was for some of my friends. Mm -hmm. And then when the conversations about, you know, like sex and things like that, like sometimes when people would say things and I'm like, mm, I'm like, that's not that right. right. Like 13 year old Danny was like, just, that's not it. Like, no. Like, I mean, I don't know everything. I'm not I'm not talking from personal experience, but I'm like, I can promise you that that's, sure that's not it. That's not it. Yeah. And I think <laughs> that it's better to start the the earlier the better. Like as new parents, and I always I always kind of say this too, um, start talking to them about their bodies, mm -hmm. their breasts, their vagina, their penises before they can even speak. So mm -hmm. while you're changing, mommy has to touch your vagina. Mommy has to wipe your yeah, vagina. No, no fake words. Daddy, daddy has to wipe your vagina. And then what you're also doing when you start that that young is you're starting to build body autonomy. Mm -hmm. And then it's easier to be like, if somebody tries to touch your vagina, you tell mommy, you tell daddy, mm -hmm. nobody should touch these spaces. And if you, you can start training them to mm -hmm. like really ha know that my body is my choice it's mm -hmm. my right and all that it starts pr we start very young yes. it becomes easier once you leave my body then it becomes your body yeah. exactly good exactly. point exactly exactly um so another question that i had for you so i told you that we you know we definitely wanted to talk about like the book and the, the, the body and the, the just like the focus on that. But then there's also like that relationship portion. Mm -hmm. And TJ and I, so like we've been married five years now together, 14. Is it four? Is it, we're going on 14. Going on 14. Oh, Carry we're going on 15. Wait. What's 2004 to now? So that's 14 years. Yeah, 14 years this summer. Okay. All right. So this is when you know you've been, it's been a long time. And obviously, like we've got. Lots of things going on. We try to. We're doing a podcast. We're in school. We're working. We have a child. All this stuff, and obviously, like intimacy becomes something that falls by the wayside. So, a question that we have or want to know is, in as far as like at different stages of your life, because and you already kind of touched on it, is like, what do you believe like a healthy sex life is, or like when you're talking like frequency, you're talking about intimacy, like whatever however you want to interpret that right so in for you and for all the listeners mm -hmm. right i think the first thing is you need to identify what how important is sex to you period mm. right and just be really honest with each other and be like and evaluate it for yourself first and think about it for yourself how important is sex to me um, it, and how important is sex in this relationship at this time? Because mm -hmm. I think these are conversations that you shouldn't let years and years and years go by mm -hmm. on silent. I think it's regular check-ins. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it it has to do with open communication. And obviously, being new parents, being in school, there is a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, you have to really create time. But I think prior to creating time, you have to identify like, what does that look like for me and what will feel good to me, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think a lot of people end up in relationships that 
can end up sexless, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. It might mean that those two people aren't that sexual. Mm -hmm. Um, So evaluating what is best for you. Then being honest with your partner and being honest with yourself about the 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 reality like what is actually tangible right mm-hmm. like is this realistic sometimes people say things to me and i'm learning this myself um i i want to spend every waking moment with you okay that was a lie because mm-hmm. that yeah. is not actually possible mm-hmm. and it sounds creepy but you know <laughs> these these hallmark cards that we get and these ideals of what a mm-hmm. relationship is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. What is enough sex in a successful relationship? Mm-hmm. I think that that has to be determined by the two people or three people or however many people in that relationship, mm-hmm. right? Got it. That is what you have to establish. And then you, you make time if you have to calendar it. Mm-hmm. So if it's like, okay, I really would love to have sex at least two, three times a week. Mm-hmm. But let me look at my schedule. Okay, I have kickboxing in the morning. I got a big meeting. I'll probably be up late, right? I have a class. All right, so maybe it's not three times a week. Maybe it might be only once a week. Mm -hmm. And then you have a baby. Mm -hmm. And it might be like, okay, now where do we fit this once a week in? Mm -hmm. And the baby's crying and the this and the that and the phone's ringing. And so you're like, okay, Maybe it's once a month, right? So I think understanding that it's going to ebb and flow, Mm -hmm. but try to set a base mark. Like, okay, we're in this together. We're a team. So let's not let a month go by without sex, Mm -hmm. right? That you make that sex date, come hell or high water, you make that sex date. Mm -hmm. And you show up. And even if you're tired, you show up. And And it's not because you have to. It's because you've made a commitment mm-hmm. to yourself, right? It, you take the other person out of it. Because remember the first thing we said, have a conversation with yourself. Mm-hmm. Identify how important is sex to me. Okay, I know how important it is. Then have a conversation with your partner. Okay, how much sex would, in an ideal world, do we want? Mm-hmm. And then be like, okay, so let's talk about what's realistic. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> kind of, it's like smart goals. You yep. set these goals, right? Then it's... Holy shit, this week got away from us. We didn't we didn't do it. So doesn't mean you need to go above and beyond next time, mm-hmm. but maybe you can have a little nicky nicky. And does it always have to be sex? Could it be oral? Mm-hmm. Could it be a hand job? Mm-hmm. You know what? Sometimes I might just want my partner to grab my left titty while I'm masturbating with my vibrator. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm tired, you're tired, mm-hmm. I don't feel like showering, or I just got out to shower, you're not finna. Get me messy, honey, because mm-hmm. I ain't trying to get, get this press, you know, <laughs> steamed up. I'm trying to go straight to work in the morning, whatever it may be. So can you just grab my boob? I'm going to rub one out. You want to hold the vibrator for me? Just find ways mm-hmm. to, like, um, fulfill each other. And then intimacy is something totally different. Mm-hmm. Intimacy doesn't have to be sex at all. So then, again, let's go back to the plan. Have a conversation with yourself. Mm-hmm. Evaluate. <laughs> How important is intimacy and how do I identify intimacy without sex? Because that's something I feel like a lot of people struggle with. Like they can't, um, they, they think of intimacy, they automatically think of sex. Um, or you're with a partner who um, their intimacy doesn't quite look like your intimacy. Mm-hmm. And you it takes some time to like identify that, right? Mm-hmm. Intimacy can be as simple as a loving nudge or... The way they look at you Mm -hmm. or breakfast or, you know what, babe, let me go handle this bottle time. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's I need five more minutes of sleep. And Mm -hmm. that is, oh, honey, I just feel like I had an orgasm (laughs) because I got five extra minutes of sleep. It's things like that. I think there's not a set time. Also, when I say schedule sex and, and schedule sex and do it. If you miss it, that's fine because I don't want this to just become a chore on a list yeah. of things to do, right? It's like, go get the eggs, have, have sex, sex, whatever. Pick up, pick up the dry cleaning. Right. Yeah. And I might also recommend trying to step outside the box sometimes with sex, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you have all these things going on. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think creatively and appropriately. Um, but, you know, <laughs> maybe a quickie here or a quickie there or 
if you don't or sometimes a nice slap on the ass yeah i'm just giving you kind of ideas because i might not have children but i do know what it's like to have a laundry list mm-hmm. Of, mm-hmm. of things to do and sex is important um but it's not the most important or you have to evaluate that for yourself like mm-hmm. you re- it really is a difficult thing to answer because you got to ask yourself how important is sex to this I think that was a very good response because yeah. that's kind of what like our so like our, our some of our beef was like about because like we said like have all this stuff going on and I, and one of the things that you mentioned was about like I like about what you said about the intimacy portion because I think that's sometimes where that reevaluation has to come in because we talk about like we we've talked about love languages on the show and he and I speak as like as far as our primary love language are definitely different like definitely. mine are acts of service so it's again like that uh-huh. yours was um I had like five ties cuz he wants but, it all that's what yeah, it is he's like give me the cake i want to eat it too that's exactly have a soda pop. <laughs> but what she said about the commitment about uh, i think my biggest thing with it is the attempt mm mm-hmm. mhm if you're trying, I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. But if you're just like, listen, I'm tired. It is what it is. See me, see me when I'm not tired anymore. And it's kind of like well, you're always you have kids. You're always going to be tired. Yeah, but I feel like that's where when you say like evaluate yourself. For me, I could be tired, but if you if you hit me on my shoulder, I'm waking up. But you have to understand why. We're different bodies. Definitely. And different brains. And this is no discredit. That was my to, question. <laughs> this is no discredit to mm-hmm. men at all. Like, I might be tired, right? Mm-hmm. And I might want to have sex. I might want all the D tonight. <laughs> the problem is, um, being a woman after having children, it's going to take this motor some, some time to warm up. Like, mm-hmm. you know, on average, women take like anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes to get to a place where it's actually comfortable and we're lubed up enough mm-hmm. and we're wet enough to have intercourse after having a child well you're still trying to get to know your pussy again <laughs> because something crawled out of it mm-hmm. right and and i think for men and i love you men yo dick will get hard when the wind blows and that is a That's that true. is a blessing and we are very jealous of it don't mm-hmm. let a woman tell you she's not because there are times that we're like, man, oh yeah, we want it. But it's like, okay, the cootie cat is not communicating. Something is not <laughs> popping off. I'm, if, you know, as a parent, and again, I'm not one, but, you know, what I hear a lot from mothers is, is the baby going to wake up? Is she going to choke on food? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'd be a bad mom because I was getting ass and my baby <laughs> fell out the crib. I mean, like, these are all thoughts that new mothers have, mm-hmm. right? What if the baby sees me or hears me moaning? Like, I thought it ruin her for life. Like, you know, these are new mom challenges. And it's also parenting challenges. Mm-hmm. Like, so I think that we want to have sex. We want to have, des- but sometimes our desire is not there. Got it. But conscious, so like men think linear, women think with all parts of our brain, right? We think with more parts of our brain than men. Men can focus very easily on pussy, 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 hell, yeah, come on. <laughs> women will be like, did I put bleach in the clothes with the darks? And like, mm-hmm. we'll have so many things. So for us to get to a space where we're sexually ready, it takes work. And we want, I feel like that's something I wish a lot of men knew. Like, it's not, you can't just roll over, poke me, put your penis in me and think like, first of all, that I'm wet. Like, but then sometimes as women, we won't say anything. And it's a hard thing to say because we don't want our partners to think we don't love them. Mm -hmm. We don't want them. It's just the mechanics of a woman's body takes a little bit more time and it's a little bit more difficult for us to clear the space in our brains um, to allow for like us to fully enjoy mm-hmm. um, the experience. And then when we're not enjoying the experience, then now our brains is like, mm-hmm, now you his piece of ass, bitch. Like our mm-hmm. brains are saying all these other things like, why am I, why do I feel like this isn't, um, he's not paying me this or he's not doing that. And you know, I can't speak for every single woman out there, but I have this deep down uterus, spi- uterus spidey sense that there are a lot of women out there who have experienced it. Mm-hmm. I have. You know, I have been in relationships where 
the I might want to have intercourse, but the other person, their brains was not in it. And then when they want to have intercourse, I'm asleep. Like, mm-hmm. but then I just give in, which is a terrible thing to do because I'm just reinforcing bad behavior, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh my gosh, a sexologist has had sex problems. Go figure, right? <laughs> um, it's human. It's a very human experience. But I think, you know, we want to try, but with the 20 minutes it would take us to get wet and ready, you know, the baby's going to wake up or I'm going to fall asleep. And then we don't want you to think we're not there. Mm-hmm. It's just that it's the way our brains work, I think. Yeah. I, and I think, and that's like something that I've kind of like had that conversation with TJ many times of, about like, I'm like, you got to understand. It's just like, I'm like my head and my coochie are like interconnect. Like they're very, they're connected. So it's like, if I'm not in that space up here mm-hmm. and it, it's not, not going to happen down there. And mm-hmm. it's also like, I think too, and, and that goes to say that, and I've, I've said that to him in the context of if me and you like aren't in a good place with each other, like mm-hmm. if we just fussed about who's picking up dinner or what do yeah. whatever, it's like, you know, it's, you know, I think that's like, goes back to like you said, the brain and the biology, because we could be beefing, but then mm-hmm. if I come over to him and two seconds later, I'm like a little bit like this, he's ready. But like, if he tries to come over to me and I'm like, don't touch me. I'm like, get off me. Yeah. Like, like I need a break. I was like, I need a minute or 20. Right. And or it's. 30. <laughs> or another day. 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, I'm like, it's just like, it can't, it doesn't, and you know, and it's like trying to explain that to a, a, a man is like, it doesn't correlate. It's like, how are you going to give me your ass to kiss? And I'm, and I'm not trying to like bash you or anything like that, babe. But Be it's right. like, you know, it's like, you can't give me your ass to kiss one second. And then the next second you want me to like be so, ready to right, go. Right, right. Right. And I like, I, I, I I, that's not how it always is it's not how it always is but gotta, sometimes that's and it's not all about you too because I bet there's yeah. somebody else out there feeling the same, same way. way and it's Definitely. just like and he has valid points too and that and I think it's <coughs> it's the and because that my question was literally going to be like can you like back me up on that there's like a connection between like the brain and desire and for the women internal, the, for well, women and yeah so think about this Viagra for men right mm-hmm. That is a blue pill that literally you take it and the chemicals in that pill send blood to your penis to give you an erection. Then they came out with the pink pill. Mm -hmm. But the pink pill is actually like an antidepressant. It doesn't send, you know, tingles (laughs) tingles to our vaginas. It doesn't doesn't work at that. It works in brain chemistry and it's more like something like a, literally like a, a antidepressant medication, right? And then also understanding, like, there's a lot of brain and body biology here. So depending on your medication that you're taking, um, that can also, like, remove desire. Got it. Um, Stress levels, obviously, remove desire. And those kinds of things can make people feel like they're not wanted by the other person. And it's not that. It's just so hard to talk about because it's not, like... Some people, it's like, I want to have desire for sex. It's mm-hmm. just, just, currently, don't. it's not it's not there. And men have needs, and I get it. Mm-hmm. I definitely get it. It's not to say that men are more horny than women. No, 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 no. Because there are it's, some very horny women. It, it, talk about it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just kind of, again, like, how do we get through that? How do we manage that? If I am not in the mood, and it's taking me a while, one... Check in with yourself and be like, hmm, I don't think I'm really, I'm not having enough sex here. Or, hmm, I don't think I'm putting out enough here. And why is that? Mm -hmm. So then you have to kind of ask yourself, why am I not putting out? Oh, I just don't want to. Okay, I need to tell my partner and accept that I'm struggling with desire. Mm -hmm. Right? And then that might be a call to a therapist. Mm -hmm. Not because there's something wrong with your marriage. Mm -hmm. There might be some residual things from your past that, you know, now that you're in this new space Mm -hmm. of your life. Remember, we talked about the hats at the beginning, right? So the idea that one of your hats might be bringing things up for you that are pulling away from a different hat Mm -hmm. and and the way you wear that hat. Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of balance, how do you get, how do you make all those hats fit? fit on one head? On one head. And it can be done. It's just you check into them. Mm -hmm. And you rotate them and you're checking, making sure everything's tight Mm -hmm. there. So I think that's kind of what it's about. And don't take it personally. But I do want to say this about sex. 
Because you know I love talking about sex. Yes. <laughs> Guys, if your lady wants to give you some pointers on sex moves or something you're not doing well, don't take it personally and shut down. Mm-hmm. It's just like, again, as we age, and this is, I think, really important for men to, rem- to remember, as we age and as our bodies change, not just after childbirth, but also like um, as we get older, we go through different changes, hormonal changes. Um, don't take offense. Just, you know, hear us. Hopefully, ladies, you're respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, I, in the past, have not been so respectful. <laughs> Probably talked my way out of some ass. But, you know, I live, I learn. That's mm-hmm. why I'm giving you guys all this advice. Well, we, and we appreciate girls. it. And I think it's important for, and I, I really feel like it's important for people to hear because, you know, this is us, you know, and this is something that we obviously, like, go through. And, and I think the term ebb and flow is something I, I know I've used before because it, it comes... And goals, and you know, whenever you hit these new, uh, you know, you're at this new juncture in your life that now there's these new, you know, great things that have happened, but there's mm-hmm. also these like, you know, detractors, and that it's Im- it's important to kind of like you said revisit and like with yourself and to communicate because I know for myself I get like that you talking about that whole brain thing because I'm thinking about like oh my god I have a lesson plan and I have oh. a classwork and a discussion board post and that's Tatum saying she's hungry and I gotta wash her hair and I got, and then I gotta you know um trying to figure out what I'm wearing to work tomorrow and this and, that. and then it's just like by the time my head hits the pillow it's like lights You're are done. out lights are out and it's, you know and that is and it's it's. I know it's not just me, and there's like a lot of no. unrealistic expectations. Well, well, definitely not. Not just you. I mean, we've we've had conversations. I think that's one of the the, I guess, cool things about us. Like we have those conversations. Yeah. We talk about mm-hmm. those things. Um, probably early on, I, I wasn't as understanding, but then you kind of see it, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh shit! Like, yeah, it's a lot going when on. she's falling asleep, where she's staying, pretty much. You know, so so you, so you understand that, you know, I don't mind talking about it because I know there's other people out there who's, who goes through it, but they may not know how to communicate with their partner yep. or, or they may not understand to kind of sit back and say, what what could I do different? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, what questions could I have? Sometimes people, sometimes couples don't have this type of conversation because it's like taboo, like. I'm not going to ask about it or I'm not going to ask what can I do better. Or they should know. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, also, and this is, you know, <laughs> c- kind of personal in some of my um, past relationships. Like I've been with people that, which is crazy, that are not communicators. Mm-hmm. Like you might think like, girl, how are you ever going to be with somebody who's not a communicator? Mm-hmm. Right. Because I'm a talker. I, I love, I mean, again human development i love this Mm -hmm. and and just knowing people and i always have been and they are just not that person or they were not in any way a talker or a communicator doesn't mean it wasn't a good thing Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it wasn't working in its own way but that's another thing i think society puts on us all these expectations of what relationships should look like Mm -hmm. relationships should look like what the people in those relationships want them to look like. Facts. You know, as long as it's not oppressive in any way and nobody's Abusive. getting a beat yeah. down, and, yeah. you know, it's a safe and consensual uh, relationship, then go on and do what you do. Yeah. yeah. It definitely is. Um, I guess, what could you say, and I know you kind of, t- again, like you kind of, you, you must have like really read my mind when we were talking <laughs> about like the different questions because one thing that, I would want our listeners because a lot of people that we do know that listen are in some form of a relationship or have been or in between relationships. Mm -hmm. And what's some ways that couples can try to, I guess, like keep it interesting. And I'm not just, not just necessarily in the bedroom, but just like, what are some things that you would say? Like if I'm thinking like a a whole body or a whole, like thinking right from the all sides, like what way could a, a couple try to, keep things interesting because you know as time goes by we get into our norms we get into our routines we get into that we get into those zones of just kind of like we're two ships the ruts yeah ruts the that's ruts. the word so i think i think all people coupled or not coupled should remember the mind is like a parachute mm. it's best used when it's open 
I like that. So you want to open your mind and your spirit. Okay. Again, I can talk about how in past relationships, there were things that my partner was into. I was not into, not mm-hmm. even a little bit. But then I said, let me open my mind. And I tried it. Mm-hmm. I tried what they were into. Maybe mm-hmm. I didn't quite like it the first time because I didn't understand it. But then as I got more into it, I caught myself at a Doctor Who convention once. Mm-hmm. A Doctor Who? Oh, a Doctor Okay. I'm, I've heard I, of it. I've never anybody, seen it. A lot of people don't know, but mm-hmm. most people who are into it are very culty about it. It's a very culty kind of television it's, um, show. Cumberbatch, right? Is it's, it the new one? Doctor Benedict Cumberbatch, the actor? It's a girl this time. Oh, it's a girl? Which okay. is amazing because in the many, how many ever, 50 years it's been on, it's never been a woman. But that's, okay, now I'm getting geeky. <laughs> um, okay. But it's kind of like if it. you're into Star Wars and you are just like, I'm not into Star Wars, but you go to like a Star Wars convention mm-hmm. with them or something, one, it's going to make your partner feel really happy. Two, um, it's also, you might end up finding out you like something different you learn something different and Mm -hmm. that's about like keeping your brain sharp Mm -hmm. as a human it's just trying new things um groupon i love a good groupon i do tj swears Um, by those you know doing things theater shows and then a lot of guys out there might be like theater is boring i might fall asleep and some people might fall asleep just try new things exercising together Mm -hmm. um that can help keep you fit get your endorphins up and it can raise your boost your libido yes um what other things read books together i think that's a really great great way to like have your own little book club the Mm -hmm. two of you meet up with other couples and have book clubs or uh couples charades um (laughs) you know help like, if you have a couple friend group, mm-hmm. get together, go camping. Mm-hmm. Like, do the things that you wanted to do as a little kid. Don't let the curiosity for life mm-hmm. leave you in adulthood or get in the rut. And if you want to break that, you got to tap back into that curiosity. So take a moment, tap right back into yourself, mm-hmm. and remember, try to remember, what did you love to do as a little kid? Mm. Well, what were the things you were mm. really into? And then find ways you can implement that into your relationship. Because you color, like, it sounds silly, but like coloring together. Because you have to take care of this whole person. I love to color. This whole person. And mm. you have to. I'll watch you color. <laughs> I'll definitely watch you color. While well, there's football on or something. Mm. No, no. I'll watch you. a basketball no. game. Because, see, when I color, when I do anything, I just. I don't have patience a lot of times, so his, I'm his, just gonna go. His like, hand, his hand-eye coordination is like a little. No, nah, I don't do that. I'm just saying. Like you don't shuffle cards. I'm, like he yeah, can't shuffle cards. That's because my hands are just really big. But I'm just <laughs> saying. Besides that, like for me, coloring, I, I don't want to have to take my time. I just want to color. Like I just want to. Have you ever gone to a paint and sip? No. So, <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't because that's what we were supposed to. But it was it was a lie because I threw I threw him a surprise 30th birthday party and I told him we were going on one. And then when his family and friends were there, and he's like, what? What the hell? I thought this was a pain and sip. Yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's fun. Okay. We might have to try that. I want to. We took a painting class together. We oh yeah, we were in college. We, we, were did, college. Take a, we did take a painting class oh, together. Look, right here, taking it back to memories when you had less things going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You and the smiles. Your smiles lit up. Cause I, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so was that, like, it, that class was <laughs> that class was bad. <laughs> That was a but look at you laughing. Yeah. Like yeah. you're connecting back to a memory mm-hmm. and a time before you have all these things. Like all the adulting came Makes through. Yeah. You're right. And I, I think those are good things. And it's fun. And we just also came back from like a couple's trip because we oh. went away for his birthday. And we were with like some, you know, some of our really, really good friends who also are, are couples. And, you know, I think, I mean, I know I had a really no, good I had time. A, I had a ball. And it was. I want to do more like couple trips. Like yeah. More like, you know. And it's it's nice now though because you know for the longest time while we were always kind of like that couple that was like the constant like always the always in a relationship danny and tj and then our friends were like i'm dating this person but now they broke up and now they're single you know so like we you know and what what was always kind of like a the one good thing about us i always felt like is that we never made any of our friends ever feel like the third wheel like it was like there Mm -hmm. was so many times where it'd be like me tj and my best friend or me tj and his best friend but it never felt like Oh, I'm infiltrating like whatever they have in going on because yeah, in yeah. their relationship, or they're making me feel like because, because it's just like now nah, we're just all together, we're mm-hmm. hanging out, right. and 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 so now though we're, we're older, 
you know, more of our friends are married or in long term relationships. So now we get to have these experiences as like couples mm -hmm. because, you know, it's there's just that, that that constant. But I think those are really, really good suggestions because it means, like you said, tapping back into the things before we had everything going on and what, you know, the things that made us happy. Like one thing I always liked was um and you say like take open in your mind because I'm not really huge on sports, but what what little I know about basketball is just literally it's kind of like osmosis. Like I just been in the room while he's watching the game, and I like you know know players or I'll know like positions or who I, who I'm looking at, mm -hmm. and or like video games. He's somebody who enjoys playing video games, and mm -hmm. one thing that we used to do when we were younger was um, the the video games that kind of required you to like solve puzzle like the patient he has no patience he's like he likes shoot him up games but like when you have I'm to like to the point. when you have to like figure out the combination open a door that wasn't him so then that's when they like I, mean, I didn't mind it but it was I was better yeah I was better at it so like Listen, like Tomb Raider that was our like that was our shit like Tomb Raider I would figure out the like the puzzles and whatever and then as soon as somebody started shooting at me I did pause and like pass the controller back over to him and then he would kill like kill everybody and then we'd switch back and forth and so like it's it's you're right like it's small things but there it's whatever kind of brings it back to like why you even got with this person to begin with yep. you know and I think that that's I think that's awesome yeah um so I have a question for the guys so I, I hear guys talk about threesomes right Oh, okay. And, and, and I want to ask, what is your view on it? Like pros, cons? Just because I feel like guys say it, but don't really think about. Nobody thinks about the logistics. Yeah. That's the thing. It's a lot of limbs. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a dog and pony show. That's the <laughs> show. Um, so I think, you know, maybe this is a fantasy you want to, or have wanted, um, Maybe you tried it once before and really liked it. There's a lot of things that can be great, I guess. You can be like, man, that was a great experience. And then there's a lot of logistics, like STIs. Not just STIs. Um, who's wearing a condom? How you doing that? You're switching in between, mm -hmm. right? Like, how you protecting yourself? Mm -hmm. And it's not even about, yes, it is about STIs, but even for women, like, mixing different, it can throw off the... A healthy probiotic in the vagina mm -hmm. and now I got BV now I'm smelling like fish yeah. and guess what you don't have to smell it all week buddy because you <laughs> got a threesome you get what I'm saying got so you. like things like that um is your dick gonna stay hard did you think about that because uh, I feel like a lot of men in their minds like yeah but then once you get men in the room you know <laughs> I've seen it where the man couldn't get an erection because he just was like who do I touch first? Like, it, it, it's not as easy as a man would think. Mm -hmm. You watch these pornos and you are acting like a little kid who saw his first horror show thinking it's real. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Um, not to say you can't do them. Not to say they can't be hot. Because if I said that, I'd be a liar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just a logistical thing. And this is just going to throw all caution to the wind. And then it's like. Who leaves first? And do you pay for the cab? <laughs> Where Whose house are you at? Mm -hmm. Is there kids there? Are you going to step on a toy? So do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, There's yeah. a lot of logistical things. Like, Are you at the hotel? Who's paying for that? Mm -hmm. are you do you go that? halves on that? Where did you find the girl? Use the cash app. Is the person going <laughs> to rob us? Like, There's a lot of different things to think about. Got you. Um, not saying you can't do it. You hear that, fellas? And then, and then we ain't even got to the emotional part. What if now all of a sudden you like it so much you can't stop? You gonna give up your relationship for a piece of ass you got in a threesome? Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. How will that change your life? How will that change the dynamics of your relationship? How might your woman look at you differently? Will she still trust you? Is that gonna be a thing? Will sex be the same? I mean, like, you really got to think about all of the things that could absolutely go wrong. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to move forward, as long as it's consensual, Thanks. go ahead on. It, but don't, you need to do it sober. Mm. Because what if, oh, one night we had a threesome. It was wild. It was great. It was crazy fun. Hennessy, Hennessy. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, the third party's like, I didn't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. I felt pressured. I mean, 
It's yeah, things be, to think it about. Can be very, it, it can, can be, be problematic. Sticky. Yeah. Precarious. Yeah, stick, sticky is a good word, literally and figuratively. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, I mean, if you want to do it, you. I'm not saying not to do it. Just, just I just consider the option. Yeah, I consider understand. the option. And what if you and your partner like doing it, right? Mm-hmm. Do you sleep with the same person every time? Or how do you guys go out and find your third? Mm. And again, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just there are things you should consider. You should think about it. The logistics of it. Every time you find a third, do you have to wine and dine them? Are you going to start dating a third person? And does that person now become a part of your relationship? Or is this a sex thing? What if the third person starts catching feelings for your wife? What if your wife starts catching feelings for that third person? It's just, I don't think people think about that. And that's when it gets messy. Mm-hmm. They don't think about all that stuff before they get into it. What's the backup plan? Mm. And what's the backup plan, backup plan? What if the third gets pregnant? What if the third gets an STI? What if the third brings an STI into your relationship? What if the third has a crazy other partner that shows up at your job one day? It's for those reasons why. I mean, we're good. It's not high on my list of things that I want to do. But it was like, I, I see, I think I should like those whole brain things. Cause I'm like, I would think about all of those things before. Well, that's the reason why I, I, I asked the question yeah. so because I think as, as, as guys, society tells us, you're not, you're the man. If you, if you can get two women, you know, I don't, I think that we don't think about the full picture. So mm. That's that. That's that kind of linear yeah, thinking. Definitely. Like you're just thinking about. The, it's a gift and a curse. I see. It is really a gift and a curse. I mean, I'm, I'm good, but like I said, I wanted to ask the question because I, I wanted to be able to give that get that insight. information. And now there's no Craigslist. Where are you gonna find your threesome? I've heard they, about that. They got rid of, they got rid of Craigslist. And yeah. Backpage. Backpage. I heard about Backpage. Yeah. Craigslist. Fet life might go down. Mm. Parts of Reddit have gone down. Um, you know. Our government is starting to police our sex lives, Mm. which is a problem. And they're using very, they use language that makes it seem like we're doing a great thing. We're ending human trafficking. But oftentimes when you get to the nuts and bolts of some of these bills, um, they're actually hurting people more than they are helping. Mm -hmm. Or the way the bills are designed secretly can hurt the very organizations that are trying to help uh, survivors and victims. Oh, wow. Um, So it's... Because you can't track... It's it's, it's complex. If the website isn't out, then there's no way to track. Well, and they can lose... In some of these bills, we're talking about like the... um, it's, It's the idea of like making liable the website for the practices that its users have. For mm-hmm. example, like Craigslist, mm-hmm. right? They took down personal ads because the new bill changed the laws. They used to not be responsible, right? But now they're saying that depending on what is up, um, the website can be reliable for the acts of its users oh, okay okay um so they got rid of that but the problem is is that some of these spaces like reddit would allow sex workers to um have conversations with other sex workers to identify johns that were dangerous mm. and now without these spaces um these women and men and individuals who choose um sex work are now forced to not have as much um, as 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 many ways to communicate with other mm-hmm. people in their profession. So it's like providers. a lo- it's like a loss of a resource, like a yes. A vital and resource, yeah. um, I also believe that if um, a nonprofit or an organization that really that relies on federal funding mm-hmm. is caught saying anything that could lead someone to believe they were encouraging sex work. Uh, they would be, mm. they would lose federal like funding. funding. There are sex education websites that have gone down because of this. Wow. Um, there are resources that are being lost uh, because of this. And it's unfortunate because it, it, it's one of those laws that may end up hurting people more. Than helping. Cause it put, and also sex workers or adult providers um, can no longer, they can get shut down um, if they're advertising for mm. their work. Um, but we're pushing them back out on a stroll. Like mm-hmm. they gonna be back at uh, Hunts Point, like, <laughs> right? Like yeah, you know. So it's 
it's to some extent um, human trafficking is a horrible thing, mm. um, but it's happening in other spaces and other places in more aggressive ways than the ways these laws, these bills have been written. Mm-hmm. So and that, you know, well, I don't that, even, it sucks. It, yeah, bottom line. Um, so when, before we started recording, I know that, um, you know, I was kind of giving you the rundown. Do you have any questions for us or anything? Actually, it's interesting because I feel like we've kind of touched on them. So okay, <laughs> one of the things was being new parents. I wanted to ask how sex is going. <laughs> and it's, and like the idea of desire and yeah. how we communicate and how we get through that and but that was you said we kind of actually answered and kind of worked yeah. through it yeah because it's, it's did. yeah you know because it, it's up and down it's ha- yeah it's like it's not for negative um again i think it's just having that communication yeah and, and being huge. okay to, to to talk about it and and being able to see it you know mm-hmm. like you said sometimes well not sometimes guys are, are, are linear so i may look at it a certain way and then i may need to see something to be like oh i was wrong yep um and you know i think that's one of the things i'm okay with saying i'm wrong i'm okay with some men are taking my faults so you know i i do see that my wife does a lot you know mm-hmm. i've seen the change in her body i've seen the change in everything so i i understand Mm -hmm. so yeah and i think that um you know trying to make sure like i communicate to him like for for us it's it's always kind of been like that level of like that that exhaustion like that tired thing Mm -hmm. that that bit has always been like kind of like that point a point of contention with us because like i can't emphasize in how many ways like how i'm exhausted sidebar though yes with that you used to always say you were tired. I did, and so, I was, so I was, so I, was now, girl, I was the girl who cried wolf because I was tired. Yeah, okay. I was tired when I I just wanted to make sure that I had was first there. had a full time job. Then I was tired when I became a teacher, and then I was then now that I'm like I, I, when I got pregnant, I was tired, and then when the baby came, I'm like more delirious. tired than I'm delirious, you know. Yep. And I've said, you know, and so I said like I should have not complained about being tired five years ago the way I'm tired now because it's a whole new level. It's yeah. like it's there's levels to this shit, and you know and communicating to him that you know I, I did do that and i you know i shouldn't have said that but like you know now reflecting back like i've spent the better part of a year waking up several times during the night like you know rem cycles don't happen nope. with a six week old and it's um and so that you know when you're not rested you're not really up for much of anything let alone right. eat, let alone sex so that that part we did kind of like talk about but it Again, ebbs and flows. Like we'll have our, you know, our good runs, and then things kind of like mm-hmm. fall back, you know. And it's it's it does take that communication. It does take that. And but we're and I, huh? I said we're growing from it. We are because I'll be honest. Like sometimes it's just like I'm too tired to communicate. Like I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about anything. I just want to go to bed. I just I just. You I just gotta, don't. Yeah, I respect it. So. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and but and I also have to come from a place where like I have to get over it too. So not get over it, but I gotta like meet you halfway sometimes mm-hmm. if you are trying to you know work with me. But I've had them so much. I'm like I'm just I don't got it in me. Like episode nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> episode I, episode nineteen. I don't have it in me. Yeah, and it just and it, and it shows, and then it's like and then it makes me look, and then I you know I am. It makes me look terrible or makes me look like um I don't think it makes you look not look terrible. okay, maybe not look terrible, but it's just like I I feel like the bad guy because how do you you know, how do you look when somebody's really trying to like meet you halfway and you can't even meet them like a, a foot quarter. Yeah, 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 like, like a quarter like and so that 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 is a reality and it's for why, me, as long as we have open communication. So my thing is open communication and the attempt. That that's all I that's all I would want. I, I it, it doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be whatever. But if you even thought about it or if you even attempted, then it's like okay, she tried. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's for me. I can't speak for everybody else. Mm-hmm. But so don't that's yeah. do another fourteen years <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, and then, I, I tell people all the time: yeah. if, if you want to test your relationship, have a child. Like it it, it, it tests your relationship. It tests. You're thinking everything. It, you, everything changes, you know. Like it, it's the most, it's, it's the most beautiful thing, but it can also be the the worst thing because if you're not at that mental space, or if you don't know how to 
go with the wave, you can get laws. And, you know, I think sometimes we as people get selfish. We don't see what our partner is going through or we don't care because it's about me. But, you know, that's when a relationship gets stale and mm-hmm. messed up. So, And I think it's really important to know that, like, it takes a village. When they say it takes oh, a no, village, no, it takes a village. Like, we so would when be... Tatum was born, mm-hmm. Danny's cousin came, her older cousin. And she literally, like, took Tatum for us. Like, and I was okay with it. And Danny was... Became okay with it, but looking at it, I was so I'm so appreciative of it because she understood. If like she's a mom. we thought we were ready, but we weren't ready. That's another thing I tell people. Like there's there's no way to prepare for a child. No, none. You know, mm-hmm. you, but, you could think that you're ready, right? But there's no way to no, really prepare you're not, for it. You're not. Not at all. But also, I I say that to say don't let the oh I just need to make a little more money stop you from. Mm-hmm. If you want if a family, you and your, if you want a family, at some point, don't be like, because there's never a milestone. Yeah. There's never a point where you're like, I've got this, I've got that, I've got no. It's still, it's still something. It's still like a whole. It's such uncharted territory, and it's, it's, um, an amazing ride. And like we're only a year into it, and it's like you know, still like the best thing we've ever done. And it's still like she makes us so happy, but it's, it is. Growing pains. It is like a lot of growing pains. Like, you know, you're watching her grow, but then you're, you're watching yourselves grow as parents. And then, you know, what the amazing thing is, though, too, is that, like, you get to kind of appreciate your partner in a whole new light if they're, you know, as long as they're good parents. But it's like, I do love watching him be a father with her. Like, I love that, like, like before we hit the road, I came, I went from the kitchen to the living room and I, like, I came back again and he's, like, got her, like, walking on the ceiling. Like, but, you know, but, and it's, I love that, though, because, it, you know, it, you know, I guess that like maybe it goes with almost like a biology thing. It's just like it's attractive to me that he's like such a doting dad, and he mm-hmm. wants to. You know, he takes care of her. And he loves her so much because he is, and, and he plays with her, and she's like eating. You know, she's like having the time of her life, just flipping her, him, flipping her around or whatever. And it, those things. So you get to like appreciate your partner in another. Yeah. Find a new sexy. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like it really is. Like so, you know, before it was like okay, you know, like I said, we were on horrible decisions. Like you know, doing the dishes is a turn on. But then also like getting up with her in the middle of the night. If she's like all of a sudden she wants to, get, you know, fuss or her leg gets stuck in the crib like she <laughs> like she does. Like it's just a whole nother thing. But it's like oh my god, I don't have to get up out the bed. Mm-hmm. Like thank you so much. You know so. It, it really makes a difference. But yeah, like parenting, new parenting is, it's a whirlwind. Yeah. yeah. It well, is. You guys are doing well. Thank yeah, we're you. hanging in there. You know, Trying. We're, we're doing what we can. Fake it till you make it, right? Oh, I know that. I know that. I know that. So, um, you got any more questions for Michelle before we? Um, last question about like, I guess like sexual health. Mm-hmm. And then I, I kind of want to ask a question about you personally. Oh, okay. But what's one piece of advice you would want everyone, everybody to know about sexual health? That's something that me and Danny were saying. Like, like if, if you, you were you walking down the street and you had to tell every person that you ran into one thing, like what would be like that thing? Well, Just you, one. How many you need? You can get, three. All right. Okay. You, you get three things. Hit them with the okay. headlines. One consent is. Uh, you know, not only sexy, but a must. <laughs> mm-hmm. Two, uh, don't be silly and wrap your willy. <laughs> and then three, know your status. So make sure you're getting tested. Mm-hmm. And if I could, getting tested and communicating your results with a partner. Got it. So those would be my three things. I like it. Yeah. Amazing headline. I don't, I mean, I don't, about sexual health. Oh, and it is April, so I'm going to say this. Um, it's Testicular Cancer Awareness mm-hmm. Month. As well as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. But we started with that with consent. So men, check your testes. It's important. Women, check your breasts. Get your pap smears. Mm -hmm. Like I think that the one thing I, if it was had to be one sound bite, so you can edit it if you want. (laughs) The one (laughs) thing, the one thing is remember to think about your sexual health Mm. as a holistic thing. Like that's not just genitals. That's your mind your body and your spirit and your sexuality. Remember that sexual good sexuality is a part of good health. Awesome. Yeah, that's what it'd be. And what's your um your so Michelle specific? For for Michelle, 
where do you see yourself in the next five years? <laughs> it's like a job application, right? <clears throat> More books. Okay. Um, international lectures, lecture tour. I see that. Um, television. Would really like to do that. Um, there's a lot of sex shows out right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to name any, but there are a lot out there. But one thing doesn't look like the other. Mm-hmm. Got you. And it's the hosts don't look like me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's cool. And I love what you're saying. I think you're doing a great job. I like these shows. But I really want <laughs> to look like me. Mm-hmm. I really want someone that, res- that knows a little bit more about what my struggle is. Mm-hmm. You know? I think that's it. So, more books. International speaking tour and a TV show. Claim it, girl. Maybe a one-woman show. I think I could probably do that. You definitely I, can. I think it would be funny. Tell me where to go. I have to get it on Ticketmaster. I have yeah. to add. Yeah, right? It would be funny. It would. So, yeah. So, that's that. And, and, and hopefully, you know, having dinner with you and your six-year-old. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't even... Process See, talking that. about kindergarten, yeah. right? I'm like, I can't even process that. Like, the fact maybe that with she... a kid of my own, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, and then you can like all the, you know, pregnancy questions. I know that would be fun, right? You can, you can be like, uh, I've thought about becoming a doula, so I think you'd be really awesome at that. Yeah, because and I, you know, what's funny is like, um, I when I reflect back on like my my pregnancy and childbirth mm-hmm. and a lot of the things that went right like i had you know had a completely unproblematic pregnancy Mm -hmm. healthy from start to finish and you know up until having i had to have a c-section but Mm -hmm. um there were things that i really like you know you don't know what you don't know because just i've never been pregnant before you know i've never had you know and gone had full term you know gone through all these motions and stuff like that and now, like when I think about okay, when the time comes, you know, we we do want to have at least you know more children, but when the, and when that time comes, like now I know, like okay, like these are things I might and having like a doula or do go, you know, um, it is something I thought about because I'm like, I like you know I, I have an OB, I, I had you know I had that experience, but I was like maybe this is something else I could do because. Um, trying to still have, you know, childbirth, like vaginal childbirth is, is a goal of mine, even mm-hmm. though, because it's, it's possible now, not saying it's going to happen, but mm-hmm. those are like definitely things. And, but I do feel like, you know, your, your, your knowledge and then combined with like your, the compassion and the personality, like when you're in the throes of labor, like, and I didn't even get all the way to like active labor mm-hmm. in, in my own experience, but just like where the part I was in, like. Mm-hmm. You need people who are, you know, I have my family and TJ and everything, but like you need people who are like shut talking, it down, yeah, and talking you off the ledge, exactly, like, like hold you down. You're fine. I'll handle your mother, exactly, mm-hmm. mom. I need mean, you <laughs> to step out the room. Yeah, for and a see, minute. like I and I was blessed. I didn't have that issue. Like my, I have, I still my biggest beef was with one of the nurses. So it was like or n- nurse lady. Need you to back up. Exactly. Yeah, they gave me some good drugs, and the next thing I know, I was like, "Man, fuck Monica." Monica was the nurse. <laughs> okay, so, Monica. Yeah. She, probably not the first time she's heard that, though. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, because she. Yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. But thank you so very much, Michelle. No, like, thank you guys. I, I we we you. met. You know, we we met. We found you on TJ. Found you on Instagram and well, I found Instagram after that. Instagram yeah, after on, on Power One Hundred and Five. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we found and TJ. Found you and, and I was like, oh, she's dope. And so like she's talking and, my stuff. Exactly. She's talking yeah. what I like to talk about. So we're speaking his language, mm-hmm. and it, you know, we you, you host hosted us when we were on horrible decisions. You, you know, always been such a resource and so, so open and, and and willing to to speak with us and talk to us and. We want to let you know that, like, that does not go unnoticed, and we thank you. Uh, I'm humbled. Yeah. I so, mean, actually, I'm not supposed to say that. Thank you. you <laughs> Somebody told me that when you say that, it makes you look like an asshole. No. I didn't get that. I, didn't I don't know. It's like something. But anyway, I'm super grateful for everybody who listens, for every follower, for, you know, I'm a sappy sap. So sometimes, like, when I read the letters you guys, people send me, mm-hmm. I get a little teary-eyed. Mm-hmm. I do love people. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have, if you follow me, you can kind of see my life. Mm-hmm. You don't, you only see, like, one half of it. There's, like, a whole other half I, mm-hmm. I don't share. Maybe one day you will get to see that. But um, it's, I'm so, I just feel, 
it's God working through me. Mm -hmm. She knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And she just, I, all I am is a vessel. Mm -hmm. So I just thank everybody. And thank you so much for being interested in buying my book. I appreciate you so, so much. And, oh, definitely. you know, hopefully we'll do this again sometime. No, we definitely going to have you back. Yeah, because we, yeah. I think, because I... We don't have to do a Q&A next exactly. time. Exactly. We're going to have like, to, we're gonna, like, pull hey, listen, she's coming back. And we're like, we're she's just going to be, back. it's just going to be literally going to hit you with, like, all the headlines. Okay. And then you just, like, rattle off the rattle answers. Off. All right. So but, with that, it's time to go to Danny Trey Fight. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Dun, 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 dun. So, so these so these are her sound um, bites to go into our lovers' quarrel. So get over here. That was from Mortal Kombat. I have I'm, I'm I have so many. I'm forgetting the order in which they do. I, I, I don't know. And then it's, this is probably the worst sound bites ever. Well, until you figure out how to add sound bites, I'm gonna be the sound. You can bite. do a drum roll. Go ahead. Yeah. All, All that. I can. If my, if my teaching career doesn't work out, I'm just going to do voiceovers or something like that. So, um, this is Lover's Quarrel. This is our last part of the show. So, always something that me and him don't, don't see eye to eye on sometimes. Okay. Or we, maybe we come to an agreement at the end of it or we agree to disagree. Okay. And this week's Lover's Quarrel has to do with multitasking. I say it's a myth. He swears by it. I don't think it exists. I think that you do multitasking to me is like you're just i don't think it really exists because i just feel like you're just doing one thing at a time but in like rapid succession like you're like okay i'm doing this and then i'm stopping i'm gonna do what that. about walking and chewing gum yeah i don't really care. Uh, i don't know i feel like you can multitask what I just, about I, listening to a podcast and washing the dishes i guess because mm, she does that all the time i do do that She's all in the time. Kitchen so, and you're great that. at it uh -huh. yeah but, yes okay but yes. i don't okay i just don't think but like okay he says so like what's the, he says he's multitasking when he's like on hoopstype.com and then typing a paper at the same time and I'm like you're not I'm like no you're clicking between tabs that is not multitasking well that it would be considered <laughs> multitasking because you have a task manager with multiple uh, windows open okay or multiple programs of because let's think about the word task uh, multitasking. So when I think about that, I think immediately what came up for me is a computer. Mm -hmm. And when you hit the control, alt, delete, and the task yeah. thing comes up, and you see all those things, and that's why your computer is not working well. So I'm not going to sit here and say that people multitask well. Okay. It is possible. Okay. But you're probably not doing everything that you're doing. You're probably not doing it well. I I can agree with that. I can say that because I think I that, think and I as well. I don't. Yeah. You, I just don't think, and I think maybe, and, and I'll say this, and I can amend my statement. It's, it's like your brain is, you're not commi you're not giving like 100% to whatever you're doing. You're no. like, you're giving like, ten, if you're doing 10 different things at the same time, quote then, unquote, then you're only giving like 10% of your effort or focus to may those not, things. It may not all be 10%. You may give one 15, one 5. But what kind of quality is that if you're not going to, like, if Does it's the job 15%, get done? But how, if it doesn't get done well, you got to do it again. I'm then, just saying, so when you work, you may have... Your lesson plan, but then something else happens. Something else has and ha those are and those precedent. are when my lessons are less effective because okay. if I am in the middle of a lesson, but then somebody knocks on the door and they're like, "Mrs. Byerson, I need you to do this that, and the other," and I'm gonna be like, "Okay, hold on," and then something else goes on. And I have to get back to it. I have to figure out where I left off. I have to figure out what's going on. Am I gonna have time to finish the lesson? Are I they gonna understand can, what I'm doing? You can still multitask. You, no. I think you can okay, multitask. Okay, you can. Okay, you can multitask, but you, no, people well. don't do it well. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll I'll meet you there, but it's. No, it's not. Okay. I just, I think it's not. I think some people can. I, I don't think you can. I, I, I don't think, think I can. you can. I don't think people can. If I have to get it done by a certain time, does, does, does it get done? If I have three things done that needs to be done by 10 o'clock, do they all get done? Maybe. Definitely. They definitely well, do. Probably. They definitely do. If I have an assignment, if I have two assignments due by 11.59 on Sunday, are they both done? They could be done, but how well are they done? Are you getting full credit? Yeah. I'm not getting full credit. That's because professors don't be reading shit no. in grad see, school. <laughs> see, now you're trying to find loopholes. But I just don't think, I really okay. don't. I just, because I read that at some point in time, like, it was just like, you really don't, like, multitasking just isn't. And, like, even, even to your point, Michelle, like, you're saying, like, walking and chewing gum or listening to a podcast, like, the level of attention that those activities require are not the same as, like, writing a book or an essay or um or le planning a lesson so i just feel like there, it maybe it depends on the tasks that are being 
All I can say is, <laughs> what came up for me is the idea of somebody going into surgery, and that surgeon is there to do one thing, which is fix your knee. Mm -hmm. But the surgeon also needs to make sure that the arteries don't get clotted, that mm -hmm. your blood pressure is still going. And so in my mind, in that, that's a lot of multitasking, right? Even as a teacher, you're multitasking mm -hmm. because you're teaching your lesson plan, you're trying to hit your objectives, you're managing classroom mm -hmm. behavior. You got to make sure that little Joey over there don't poop on himself or mm -hmm. hit the kid next to him because he likes to do that. So in that, I think we're multitasking all the time. Again, it's one of those things like, I want to spend every waking moment with you. Lies. For someone to say that multitasking doesn't exist is... We, you live it under a rock. Mm -hmm. Like, even thinking, I think, is multitasking. Like, I'm, you have to read someone's body language. You have to listen to the tone. You have to be aware of all of these different spaces and things going on. He feels so validated right now. Um, I, it's okay. Hey, she putting points on the board for me. Uh, what I, listen, these are her points. She's making her argument. You, in hey, 14 years, you ain't made these arguments. So it's No, like, I'm pretty sure I have. You just didn't take my, my it, I think that it's like, I think we're multitasking all the time. I think we're waiting on that phone call. We're thinking about that email. We're trying to figure out what I'm having for dinner. You now have a kid, so you are about to be the master of multitasking. I'm breastfeeding while I'm sleeping, while mm -hmm. I'm thinking about what I'm wearing to work tomorrow. Like, mm -hmm. Well, I think okay, and I can accept that point, and I can, and I can. There's different levels of multitasking, but okay. But in that case, then if multitasking does exist, if I have my quarrel, if I'm on the wrong side You're of wrong. this quarrel at this point, then that means that you can no longer say you don't know how to multitask because I do it all the time. So I do know how to multitask. So <laughs> you know, I do it well. To your point, mm, that's what you said earlier. No, because I said nope, you have all nope, those tabs open. Nope, that's what you said earlier. You believe that you can multitask, but you can't do it well. So when I say it, you don't do it well. <laughs> I can't stand you. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm i going to end this episode so, and still be nice to you. Can I get my time. points? Sure. I, I th you know why? Because I Michelle she just, saved you. All right, I, I'm cool with that. That's she, fine. she just gave me 20 assists. That's fine. We just blew you out. <laughs> blew you out the water. You want to take these out. There's a first for every, there's a first time for everything, and let it be a woman to be the one that gets oh you where you need gosh. to be. So just give me my victory. Thank you, Michelle. It's gonna be an asterisk next to it because it's, it was Mich no. it was Michelle's victory. No, not at all. Listen, red team. Sure, high five. Hmm. All right. Well, listen, we don't want to take any more time of Michelle's time. This is a busy multitasking woman. And she has <laughs> a plenty of things to do. And we thank her so much for being on this episode of Lover's Quarrel. Um, and Michelle, before we go, just tell everybody and anybody who listens where they can find you. I'm on the gram. No, I'm on all <laughs> social media at MH Sexpert. Or you can go to my website, www.mhsexpert.com. And, you know, keep up with me, Twitter, social media. And Facebook. I'll be sure to put everything in the bio and put the book in the bio. So. Oh, yeah. You can get my book. I keep yes, forgetting about yes. that. That's so funny. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, Buy you can get her my book, book. Yes. on Amazon. Yep. So we're going to have all that out there. Um, again, uh, if y'all, thank you for listening. You can follow us on IG at Lovers Quarrel Show. And on Twitter. Lovers Quarrel 7. And send your emails and, and your vents. Oh, I'm sorry. Elevator pitches. Elevator talk. Talk. We, there you go. There you go. Come on. Give I, it I'm, me. So, I'm still learning. That's why I need you. Join me over here. That's why I need you. Okay. I couldn't do it without you, babe. You're right. You know, so you can send those to Lovers Quarrel Show at gmail.com. Um, thank you for listening. And this is your girl, Danny. And this is your guy, TJ. And again, episode of, another episode of Lovers Quarrel. And as always, we fuss. We fight. But, but we, we love. love. Bye. Later. <laughs>